my name is Eva Seidak and I work in Ericsson. Been in Ericsson only for two years. Uh, before that, I was in fintech. So my whole background is fintech. Um, so that's very different from Shista and telecom and high tech. But there's also quite a lot of similarities. So I did uh, exchange technology with data at the focus. And in Nasdaq, that's core. If you don't have data, you don't have any trading at all. So data and analytic drive trades. So I was approached by Ericsson and they said, why don't you come over to us? And I said, but that's so different. I don't have any experience. And then coming to Ericsson, really seeing the similarities. Data is data, the value it brings, powering businesses. So in any context, it really drives value. So that's my background. Two years in Ericsson. This super interesting. I, I, can, uh, I actually moved from sports betting into fintech a few years ago. Mm. Also like totally different businesses, but then looking at the patterns of uh, how data is used, it was like super, super similar actually. Yeah. And I was actually going to ask you about if you worked with Ulf Hagman. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because uh, we went to Nordnet, both yeah. of us, so yeah. we met, met up there. Great. Um, anyway, executing on a modern data strategy. Yes. When, uh, why did you choose that as a topic? Well, uh, first of all, it's a bit different. We have data strategy sessions here. I'm going to talk about the execution. So I represent the data and analytics within IT. I have a lot of team members here, Mariana, Helen. Uh, so we are a big team, about 300 people that do data and analytics for the Ericsson. And if we just look at Ericsson, how big it is, it's, uh, first of all, it's 150 years old. So when they started, there were no cars, just so we get some perspectives how old the company is. Moving into tech uh, and, and now wireless, uh, and all the capabilities that we can bring from a data perspective. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really challenging to be in that environment and drive development. Interesting. Let's, uh, let's start. Let's start. So uh, again, from an execution point of view, from a data strategy. So very, very short about Ericsson. We all know Ericsson. It's been along for a long time, as I said, very well known. But today we are actually the, the leader in mobile networks. And we just started to roll that out in a wider context. And why is that important? Well, we just have Junify here. We have different uh, entertainment, Netflix, healthcare. We have smart cities. We have autonomous cars. The reason why we can have services today on that level is because we have strong backend that can manage that traffic. And if you look at the explosion of really advanced services, that's where very much the backend is needed. And that's where Ericsson has its strong position. So from us, I, I head up the data and analytics, and uh, we do data for Ericsson. And Ericsson is all about product development, getting the best products out in the market, and developing it, it in, in the best possible way. So what we need to do is to make sure that we help Ericsson internally to leverage data and analytics to the best possible extent. But there's a lot of complexity, and I think many of you are probably in companies, some are very big, international, some small startups. We act in different uh, environments, but the complexity with data keep increasing. So for us, it's a lot about multiple data sets. Uh, they keep changing. Most of all, they keep adding up. More and more data is requested, external data. And then we also have, apart from the internal data, we have the network data. So that's quite similar to the exchange data when we had the market data. Very high velocity data that we needed to cater for. So that puts the extra complexity to it, but also the lot of opportunities to fully leverage data. We are globally spread, and that's a challenge in itself, but also that we have local regulations in Europe. We have GDPR. We have jurisdiction where data is not allowed to leave, so that we constantly need to keep ourselves updated, so we manage that. But then most importantly, whatever we do, look at the end user, who's using our services. So for us, it is the business units that wants to create the best data-powered products to the market. Very important. They work with innovation, transformation, new, new offerings. We have our market area selling our offerings. They're looking at how can they push the top line. So they're really looking from that perspective. And then we have all the functional areas supporting Ericsson to run its business, HR, finance, people, supply. And they also need to be very efficient and super lean in what they do, provide the best services with the least resources. 
So all of this, from very transformational to very efficient business operation, we need to cater for every day in Ericsson. So what do we see going forward? We see that everything is changing so quickly and that data is really something that everyone wants to leverage the most of. So we see that we're moving very much into a global ecosystem of data where global sharing of data and business development will move very quickly. So that's kind of what we see happening in the, in, in the, in the quite near future. That makes us need to rethink how we work with data. If we start with the first one, traditionally IT centralized, doing all the things for the business. We don't think that's going to work going forward. It is creating bottlenecks and unnecessary lead times. We more believe in a federated way, bringing out the capabilities into the business so data can be created when it's needed. So we look for federated models in our architecture and platform setup. That's one. The other one is that we, as many other companies, have a history of having data in different places, different departments, storage in different places, geographies, no standards. It's really hard to access full data across a company if you have that setup. So we worked a lot with having standardization uh, across Ericsson. How can we work with a set of standardization and an overarching governance? Uh, thirdly, uh, Providing business with data over time, we looked very much use case to use case. So we did all the data, looking into what do you want, creating a perfect solution for that specific use case or unit. That now has added on a very unnecessary complexity. We have overlaps, uh, duplicates. That's not really needed and really put a big constraint on our systems. So we want to drive simplification. How can we create data sets in a horizontal layer that we can be developed once and used many. So the same people can supply or, or subscribe to the same data. And then importantly, again, regulation. We need to stay compliant. We talk about data democratization. If we can't provide a safe way to deliver data in a secure way, we're not gonna do, we're not gonna be able to do data democratization. So it needs to be governed and secure. And that's why we have put a lot of effort on strengthening our data management and data access control, and also have compliance overall. So if we look from our perspective, our mission and guiding principles are quite simple and straightforward, but very important to what we do. First of all, it's not just technology. We are technology. We tend to think technology. We launch really good solutions without... Uh, the data mindset, the data literacy, we're not going to get very far. We're going to have good technical platforms, but we're not going to really have any adoption. And that data sharing mindset is actually harder to implement than technology, to have that in, in an organization that's used to work in a specific way. Data-driven decisions, again, very important in everything we do. Have the right data to make the right decisions. Another really important area we're driving is processes. So we take data, we use modern tools, display the processes of Ericsson end to end, all the different processes we have. Quite soon we can realize that we have a lot of also inefficiency that can be worked with. But we need to uh, have some guiding principles. So again, work with the best data digital products by design. We're picking the solution we believe will fulfill our needs today and tomorrow. We work at scale, moving away from, from doing something very specific here and there. We need to be able to scale what we do across Ericsson. We need to accelerate the digital skills so the, the company is ready to take on the capabilities and the democratization we do and can use it in a good way. And then, most importantly, show value in everything we do and simplification. Do it as smoothly as possible with the most value. So this is obviously a journey. And I'm just showing you part here from 2021 till 20, mid, mid or 25. But here we've done some very fundamental uh, rethinking. So moving, we, need, we saw the data were in silos. Uh, it was, took a very long time to get the proper data with all the connections, but also permissions and authorizations to get the data. 
slowing down the business. We also saw that we didn't have the data in a format that was supporting digital transformation. So with that, the, the big focus was cross-functional provision of data across Ericsson. Increased data management uh, that will have the best tools to collect data about data, the lineage, how the data moves through the system, data quality, but also and simplified processes. Those are uh, the ones that we were focused on. And then, of course, consolidation of data platform to cloud. Today, in, in, in uh, companies, we often have a lot of on-prem, different type of setups. We are closing them down and moving into cloud setup so we can scale. It's really hard to say that we're going to only have one platform because that's not really working. But we're going to have as few platforms as possible that we can orchestrate and get the most out of from a perspective. So going forward, a federated way of setting up technology, bringing the capabilities out to the organization, creating the possibility for seamless collaboration and data sharing, so data can be found, used, searched for, etc. The metadata, of course, and work with simplified processes. So that's our journey. That's our focus uh, to really uh, cater for those capabilities. So just very quickly, moving from a horizontal way of providing data to a uh, oh, sorry, sorry, vertical way of providing data to a horizontal level. Um, so we can take the same capabilities and send out many times. And on the left-hand side, you see the governance. It needs to be governed end-to-end. -end. So if we look at that with a little more detail, we have multiple storage of data and sources coming into Ericsson. We collect that in data platform. We have our latest version that we picked Snowflake as our preferred partner. We move to a data product concept moving away from different type of packages, products following certain principles. Most importantly, that they can be reusable and they can be interoperable. Very important for us going forward. And then we have all the different type of users on top of that. And in Ericsson, it's, it's machines, it's algorithms, it's API, it's people. It can be ordinary business users or very, very deep knowledge scientists, etc. Where do they find the data? They do that, and we have uh, picked our partner Informatica here to uh, have all the data in catalogs so we can follow the data and see uh, what quality status it has, the lineages between systems, etc. So in the end, the bottom or the, the top line, the whole thinking is coming in and find data. And in big companies, it sounds easy that you can find data, but that's really hard to really see. What are the, all the data we have in our organization? Where does it reside? Who owns it? What's the quality of it? How does it travel through the system? That's a big thing just to see that and give it an overview. The next is to be able to access that data, apply for it, get access to it, and be able to use it. Going forward, we're also going to focus on how can we share that data, sample the data, work with it, and then publish it back. So it becomes this ecosystem where we can work with data and, and collaborate across units and drive innovation faster in the market. Again, everything needs to be governed, so we have a solid governance model uh, in place. Moving ahead uh, because of time, I'm running out of time, I think. <laughs> but uh, just very quickly on, on our journey. So we are today in the second and third phase where we're creating this internal ecosystem where we can collaborate around data and get data, work with data as a product, have modern platforms in a cloud setup, being more efficient by consolidating our legacy. But then moving in, so how can we really monetize this and provide this to the business so they can use the data? Going forward, we see that this is someday going to be connected with more an external ecosystem where we collaborate with partners, clients. Uh, we do that today, but the connection with it, with it. But as we go along in this journey, we see that there's other technologies coming in, graph technologies, digital twins, we have AI. Do we need dashboards going forward? If you can ask for analytics at any point in time when you need it. So, that whole change is moving very, very quickly. And I think that will fundamentally change how we use and, and work with analytics. 
With that, I'm just going to start some reflections, some key takeaways. We are in the middle of executing on our uh, quite aggressive uh, data strategy that we have within Ericsson. It's very helpful to have a clear strategy that we want to be data driven, that we're going to do as much democratization and self-service as possible, federate out capabilities so we can be a true data driven organization, being efficient and allowing for a lot of innovation. That strategic is very important. Know where you're going. What is it we want? What do we need to do? Back to data literacy. Very important not to underestimate, to work with that. How do you share data? What's the value of data? How can we elaborate and how can we see how that can bring bigger value together? When we go, we go end to end. So we do platform work, we do data management work, we do marketplace work. We do them uh, always, so we keep doing that in an agile way, but we always make sure that we have the end to end perspective. Because in the end, it needs to work very efficiently from, from, from end to, to, to actually the capability we provide. Agile is a given today. We have stopped certain things, go back, look at it again, how can we make this different? So it's always good to have that approach. But most importantly, it is a journey. And if you work in a company with maybe a lot of legacy, not really having, uh, uh, you modernize, you have processes that are built in, they are complex. It's not necessarily super easy to do it in one go. See it as a journey and don't forget to celebrate success because it's really an effort, uh, but it's a fun effort. So with that, I'm uh, opening up if there's questions.